Wow. I just woke up from the most amazing nap. The uh, classic post-turkey nap. Uh, although ours was a... Ours was a uh, barbecue turkey and a barbecue brisket with a bunch of sides and stuff. Uh, kind of uh, Thanksgiving. We had, a, as I mentioned last night on the live stream, if you ended up seeing that on Facebook, uh, on the on the Big Board page, we had uh, some complications <laughs> for Thanksgiving. We, we were going to have 14 or 15 of us together, and unfortunately it didn't get to happen because one of our little cousins was exposed to COVID, and his, uh, his dad, or stepdad, I should say, has a a uh, very sensitive condition, heart condition that would require him to be isolated. Now, unfortunately, those two parties had actually intermingled for a couple of days before we found out about that interaction. But nevertheless, they've split up and they all went to a hotel and then my son came home and he thought he was exposed, but ends up his buddy didn't get, uh, didn't get exposed. So we said, what the hell, let's just roll. And so we ended up having nine or 10 for Thanksgiving, which meant there was so much extra food instead of having nine of us, there were 15 of us, but that's not why I'm here. I'm here to talk about yeah, with it or on it, which is a little play on words from the, uh, the Spartan admonishment of the, the wife or the parent. Come home with your shield or come home upon it. So let's talk about this game. I've played enough now to get a really good handle or relatively good handle, assuming I got 85% of the rules right, all seven pages of them. That... Uh, this is a, an interesting little title, and, I, and I'm going to give this... Uh, it has battle book in it as well, just so there's seven pages of rules and there's some battles in here. This, is, this will come... I imagine this will be a series of modules. He's starting at, the, at one of the interesting portions of the well-documented classical era, classical period, for the Greeks, and goes through Marathon and Plataea and Tanagra, uh, let's see what else is in here, Manatea and Delium, etc. So I've played most of these other battles on Great Battles of History. And, uh, you know, this is, a, this is a fun, interesting system. It gets bonus points because it's a new ancient system uh, for me. So the fact that someone's made the effort to invest their time and their thought into how to bring the ancients world alive, other than Great Battles of History, and I know there's ancient battles to likes and <clears throat> and the lost battles or whatever it is, but I don't really count the lost battles because no one can get it, right? It's pretty difficult to get. This game feels a little bit like uh, this, the Bellas Antiquitas. Antiquitatis. I haven't read all the rules in this yet, of course, but this is a very thin set of rules. Also, it's mostly army lists here, and there's a lot of discussion around movement and flanking and all this sort of business. This game takes all that out of it, though. It takes the... The hard parts of movement and socks and facing and all this sort of business out of it. Because you really, you only move forward in a linear motion. You can, uh, you can move sideways somewhat. And when you end up adjacent to a guy like that, uh, you can attack or well, these guys can attack here. Uh, and you would get a flanking bonus. You get a, a minus one on the die roll. So it keeps it, keeps it pretty straightforward, right? Uh, the games, you know, these battles, who can say if the orders of battle are correct, accurate, super accurate, that this game works on the premise of wings, left, center, right wing for each side, and each side will receive uh, four tokens. Uh, what was it, three tokens? Three tokens to apply their orders. The bonus token, the combat token, the rally token, skirmish, move and strategos if you use strategos you're going to adjust your rally level down by one so as the persians starting at three you don't want to do that uh very often uh because as you lose leaders you'll lose uh you'll lose a uh, a rally point as well but the greeks could afford to they i think they started at four they used Strategos twice, 
uh, one to do the stadia move to do the big double move uh, and then they uh, did it again uh, to do something else. I think I used it to use all wings to attack. So we just pounded the crap out of the back, out of the, and uh, let's hit the bad guys, out of the Persians. You know, because the Persians are good guys to somebody. All right. Uh, and the game is, uh, so So from an order of a battle perspective, you're getting this, um, you know, I've got light infantry, I've got hoplites, I've got some ca light cav, uh, and that's probably the extent of it. I don't think there's heavy cab. Is there heavy cab? Let me just check the other cabs here. Nope, they're all light horse, right? And light infantry. And they really were the two main forms of, uh, of troop in this era. Now, the next module may have different forms and different, uh, different offerings with different rules for those. But the hoplites are pretty straightforward. They get some bonuses and benefits uh, fighting against light infantry. And... Uh, they get a bonus and benefits when they're doing some rallying and things of that nature. And everything really just comes together super clean, super tight. The decision making is in choosing what to do. Am I going to move or fight? Am I going to rally? Am I going to spend a point to let everywhere, everybody attack? Or am I going to take advantage of bonuses which have a distinct effect on, on the type of action you're choosing here. Really nice, really simple, but it does give you enough choice making to feel like you're there on the battlefield. No leadership uh, needs really uh, are applied here. So you're the overall battle commander. Uh, you're making decisions on a wing by wing basis or, or across the whole army if you use the strategic uh, uh, chit. Uh, you have full and complete intelligence except for what the leader is going, sorry, the opposing player is going to play because these are placed down hidden and then you're, you're both exposed at the same time. At least that's how I do it. Uh, and then, of course, if you want to go first or not. So if I have the initiative chit, if I want to go first, I got to hand it over. Give it to the other guy. If I don't want to, if I don't want to give it up, I can I can uh, hold on to it and let him go first. So this went backwards and forwards a few times, and that's a pretty straightforward uh, thing from Hollenspiel uh, in the Shields and Swords system, which is basically what this is. Uh, it's a derivative of that. Let's see. Objectives are different per battle, uh, which is quite kind of cool. Sometimes it's uh, get to a certain. Um, Rally point number, if you get that down to zero, then you automatically win no matter what. But if you are playing this particular battle, for instance, if you get to 28 victory points, it's game over, bro. You win. Uh, so uh, that that is a thing. And uh, so that can vary by game, by game, by scenario, by battle. I like that. Uh, and the CRT is super straightforward. Let's uh, show you here. It's real simple. So you've got this little CRT here. You've got a combat table up ahead, uh, up top there. You know, hoplite versus heavy infantry versus light versus horse. DRMs uh, apply. Then you look at the class of the unit. So this is a C class unit. Here's a B class hoplite. And when you when you're placing all these units on the board, by the way, you don't know. You you just you place them from basically from a cup. Uh, actually, was that true? You, that can happen, but um, I misspoke there. But uh, you can certainly choose to put all your A's up front. So you're going to get uh, you're going to resolve on the the best uh, best table here uh, versus resolving as a C on this table. Very hard for you to get great results here on a D10, right? Or, uh, or is it a D8? Uh, it's a D8 actually. Uh, there's the D8 there. And then you'll go up and down these levels depending on uh, these these modifiers here. Um, all pretty straightforward stuff. Really not that complicated at all. There is a little. There are a couple little nuances where if you're supposed to take a loss, you can let the unit adjacent to you that's supporting you take the loss for you. Uh, if you don't want to have that line crack or break, and you've already got a a brittle result or a, a shaken result. So that's a, a nifty little nuance to the to the game system that I like, kind of showing the 
the fracturing of the line over time, which is kind of cool. Rallying, uh, routing is deadly. As units route, if this guy were to route, then everybody in this uh, on this side needs to do a route check. And to not route this guy here, and this is all assessed simultaneously, needs to be adjacent to two other units, which he is. This guy needs to be adjacent to two other units, which he's not, because I don't think diagonals count. Uh, so he would come he would come off <clears throat> and this guy would not be adjacent so he might come off as well so it can it can you can see the lines just go poof bye bye and then now uh, that's for that's when you resolve one combat you resolve the next one if you get another de you have to go through that same exercise again so hence the advancing in in double depth there is very helpful for your center and your edges because you want to be adjacent to two pieces right uh, uh, like that. So very, very, that's kind of a cool little mechanic showing you that the density of the forces mattered back in those days. Uh, it didn't give the historical narrative we were looking for, but I, I kind of was playing a little bit of uh, argy bargy stuff with the, with the attack anyway. I brought the hoplites in and attack first with the center because there were hoplites or uh, heavy infantry in the center that I wanted to kill first knowing that my hoplites were only one line deep. And then if I didn't, if I let them begin to route, uh, they would route quickly because of the, uh, the way that the route rule works. So I attacked heavily here first, not so much here. I did one full attack across the board into the mass. And then I probably, I did like a hundred percent of the rest of the battle was fought right here, knowing a versus B, A versus C, I was going to give them a run for, for their money once I got rid of these guys, uh, which we did pretty quickly. We dispatched them pretty fast. Gameplay's fast. Gameplay's clean. And uh, I enjoyed it uh, immensely. It's it, it's a smash and crash kind of kind of game. Uh, there is a little bit of strategy to it, but not uh, super dupes. Uh, and there's also uh, some nice little tactical nuances to it, but nothing that you're going to sit here and be pondering for 20 minutes whether you should move wing left wing, right wing, or center, you will want to do all things, but you cannot do all things. Uh, so that's just my my little two cents on this little bad boy. And I thought I'd uh, share that with you. I like the map. It gives a, a nice thematic feel to everything. Uh, it's got nice subtle uh, tones on it. And uh, let's see, the counters are the counters, right? It's the Holland Spiel, Black Panther style. Counters the big, thick, heavy cardboard uh, sort of card literally uh, wooden sort of stock, comp heavy compressed stock. And they've got a nice satin finish to them. They look good on the board, everything pops nice. And uh, there's a few little route markers and bits and pieces that I didn't bother using. Using, But anyway, that's it. That's the whole shoot match there. Obviously no supply or any of that sort of nonsense that you would uh, think might be needed for campaigns, of course, but not for, not for a tactical battle like this. All right, thought I'd share all that with you real quick and hope you guys have a great rest of uh, Thanksgiving. And we'll move on to something fresh and new. Talk to you soon.